Okay, this last little follow up is kind of a sober developer, but let's say uh, the winning bidder said, you know what, that's all great, but it's more complicated than for us in this sense of work. You would do that because he would give you everything you want. So if you want to build somewhere, if Ronald could build somewhere else, uh, the specifications that we know we need um, and provide that to us uh, with minimal fundraising on our part, we are definitely interested. Okay, so we're going to go to the next slide. One is uh, obviously, I think there's also accessibility issues that are really important. And I think we've met with a lot of the progress over the years, but an enormous amount of challenge for the entire facility is accessible. But there's no screw. Totally different question or comment is one of the things we've talked briefly about this um, design call is whether or not the approach to use the moon block can kind of really be an example of breaking things into pieces so you have to model it. Development that the approach of keeping the data there might lend itself to a model of components of this overall city center that each are eligible for different kinds of eligible for project master development. So, as you're talking, it's reminding me of that discussion. Of Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? I just have one. Is there, is there a plan B? I mean, if, if, if the civic theater wasn't included, is there a plan B or does it kind of like take it away? Well, by being not included, does the plan then would be to tear down and not have a civic theater? I would say that we wouldn't really, and I think if we talk to our users, that Having a civic theater is a simple part of what we do in, uh, in downtown. Uh, in the community access, that benefits a large part of our community. Uh, and as you saw in Abbott's presentation, there are many things that happen only at the civic theater because we have a civic theater. So I would be um, really sad that I think most of, the, most of San Diego would be not having a civic theater where we could have the events, Broadway, and other similar events in our community. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, there is no motion required as this is an information item only. And we now take this item to two, which is international precedence for civic centers and owner East Jennifer Roost, who's also on our committee. And um, I got some feedback that it was a little hard to hear from those of us. Can, can you hear me now? And Jennifer's going to stay up front, um, so I think that'll help a little bit. But if there's any clarification you need from Carol, I know she's available in memory, we'll never um, to answer any other questions. Thank you. And Jennifer? The public comment period for this item is now open. If you have already joined the Zoom webinar online or by phone, please raise your hand if you wish to speak. The queue will close when the last in-person speaker finishes speaking or five minutes after the queue has opened, whichever happens first. To raise your hand to speak, select the raise your hand button or press star nine. Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, Jennifer Luce, and I am uh, convening our design innovation aspiration group, working group. Um, we've met uh, once now and will continue to. And I think one of the things that we want to emphasize is how um, good design, good civic design makes for good city. 
And we know that that's not the only solution to building, but good design matters. So we wanted to take a macro look at our city and international examples of great civic centers, why they work, and bring that down to the micro of how we as citizens would participate in making these spaces amazing. So um, we are calling this searching for civicness. And what it, what it is, is really an effort to define the greatness of our city within this civic space. Uh, with programming, uh, with public space, with attitudes towards every citizen, but also what is it that makes us proud to be San Diegans and how can we express that in this place? So uh, we have a lot of research and I'm gonna go through it really quickly and it's really gonna become sort of a due diligence package um, that we can each refer to, uh, but there are so many great examples in the world and no question we should be able to do just as well or better. So we have um, history of San Diego. Why are we not looking at that? Let's look at that. What is civicness in a city hall? How do we connect the civic space to the city? How do we make public space that this city so desperately needs? How do we program this to be very exciting? How do we infuse and keep the performing arts as a part of the programming? How do we address sustainability and climate action? How do we provide housing as an example of why we care about every citizen in this city? Um, how do we make mixed use programming to keep the site alive 24 seven? And how do we create urban follies and civic art to engage our citizens in joy? So what makes great civicness? And this is a document we wanna to build together. So please contribute whatever you think to our working group because this is really, really important. These are some of the things that were discussed in our last meeting, um, dignity, a place that feels clean and safe, a place that has flexibility to grow, no mediocrity allowed, yay, Lori. <laughs> a healthy quotient of aspiration towards the future, thinking on the edge, um, innovative talent behind the ideas, ingenious financial ideas. And this is something that Steve just mentioned, this project in um, Little Italy, it's a small project, but it's a great example of five developers working together to make one city block, collaborating together to make it work. And why can't this project be that? Um, don't hurry, this is gonna be forever. Um, a model that sparks excellence for other cities and informed programming um, that has defined initiatives. So we think that, well, actually what our working group is gonna do is put together a manifesto. And there's this a strong term, but we need strong language. And we hope that we can build that together um, to create a document that means the soul of San Diego. So there are many recommendations here and I'd love for you to peruse the document. Um, I won't go through everything because we've got a lot to show you, but generally taking risks, invest in the performing arts, public space, create effective, flexible, multifunctional, safe, climate forward thinking civic space. Um, we're presented with a once in a lifetime opportunity for San Diego Civic Corps that demands action to deal with housing, the housing crisis, mitigating climate change, embracing digital work flexibility, championing the essential role of the arts have in our society. There's so much more to talk about. So um, we, we think this manifesto should be a plan for action. It should be abbreviated, of course. It's gonna take a lot of working group effort. 
Um, we think donors are really important. We have a great city of philanthropy. Let's tap into it. We want to be a model of affordable housing. Los Angeles is on its way to doing that. We can do it just as well. This is a once in a lifetime legacy project. We have to get it right and we have to do it. So beginning history, we always look back to look forward. Uh, just some really great images of um, San Diego in 1887 uh, versus 1935. Look at the difference. Um, the, the poor or the, the, the Embarcadero and waterfront, um, 35 to present. Um, the pedestrian life of San Diego has always been active and strong. We need to em emphasize that. Horton Plaza, look at its development. I had never seen this image, a Beach Boys concert in 1975 at the Balboa Stadium, which no longer exists, but wow, what civic gathering is that? So our site, um, 1968 with roads running through it, should we be looking back to look forward there uh, to present day? 1967, the Civic Theater, uh, present day. Um, borrowed image from Carol, <laughs> this one. Long standing, enduring culture through perf performing arts. We need it. And Carol, I don't know how we need to do it, but we need a new theater for you. Okay, so let's look at the macro in terms of the city and all of the orange dots are starting to identify important places in our downtown life, which include new projects, um, legacy projects, and even the airport. But we really need to look at what is around this site to understand what we should build and how those relationships should be strengthened. And so we've done a study of all the important um, institutions, buildings, places in the downtown core and starting to build this document into something really informative for whatever developer groups are brought forward so that they know what our city is to us. Won't go through all the detail, but civic precedents. So we always look back as architects anyway, we look at other projects, historical or present day, to be informed and inspired um, because we learn from the actions of others. So uh, City Hall is bridging the gap between government and its citizens. That's what we really, really want to do. And here's a fantastic project in uh, China um, designed by Snowetta, um, a Norwegian firm or South Korea, sorry. Um, and this notion of a city hall opening itself, how, how easy that could be for San Diego to do, to have a sense of porosity of the walls of our city hall. Going all the way back to um, a historical present, uh, Alvar Alto in Finland, uh, this beautiful series of buildings that are connected by public landscapes and wonderful spaces for the public to participate. Boston City Hall, controversial, lots of things to learn from this project would be worth looking at. But there is a wonderful openness to the ground level. Activating public space on the macro scale. So Los Angeles Civic Center is a really good example, something that is underway being changed, can we go there and really understand what's working, what's not working? I mean, it's a working model of today. How it integrates its performing arts and the pure art, fine arts, um, museums, and centers into the plan for the Civic Center. And how public space now activated with simple things like furniture. Del Mar, not so far from us. Um, and we wanted to add also Long Beach because they've just done a great civic center. Del Mar is tiny, but they have opened the doors of their civic center to the community and it really, really works. 
transparency. Landscape, critically important. And I wish we had a landscape architect on our committee and maybe we could even add that. Um, but this idea of making public space that's green and inviting, and we need it so badly in our downtown core. Pedestrian life, making sure this site is welcome to pedestrians. There's some beautiful historic examples, also contemporary. Bicycle transit, more and more the way we move. How do we deal with that? And celebrating public transit. We have a transit system passing by the site. Let's celebrate the stop. Simple. We have a million additional projects. Public space, um, landscape architecture that changes the way we gather, active piazzas, multifunctional spaces. This is Siena, very historic um, site that transforms into a million different uh, programmings. And the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and how they simply changed the front entry sequence. And all of the sudden, people are there every day having their lunch, sitting on the steps. It's completely changed the way um, the city understands the museum and the city could understand our civic center. Humanizing spaces with detail, Lincoln Center. A huge project that changed the way people understand the arts. They want to engage with them. Um, they're there all day long, every day, it's instead of just for, for perform performance night. Marrying old and new, we're not really good at this uh, in the United States of America and certainly not on the West Coast where we build new. But I think there's an opportunity on this site to marry old and new and celebrate both eras. Rooftops, we have the perfect climate. Why can't rooftops be civic? And reinventing blight. Frankly, the Civic Center Plaza feels blighted to us. And how do we revitalize it? This is a project in Toronto done by a friend of ours, Claude Cormier, who took a site that hadn't been occupied in decades um, and did a very simple thing of adding sand and umbrellas. And this inspiration came from his trips to San Diego. So why can't we do something like that with our Civic Plaza? Private to public, what's private, what's public, really important conversation for us to have about the Civic Center. And the Museum of Modern Art um, Garden, Sculpture Garden is, is grappling with that today as they now open themselves for the public. And then eventually they're gonna de de um, deconstruct the wall that separates them from the street. Celebrate art in civic space, the Olympic Sculpture Park in Seattle. Civic programming, what do we wanna be a part of this civic center? Really, really important question. Uh, this is a development project in New York that added a performing arts venue called The Shed. It's an indoor, outdoor performing arts, fine arts, unbelievable. Um, it has activated this project in the way that no other development uh, on the site has been able to do. Opening buildings to the civic life, making civic space feel accessible in San Diego, and merging art with government. This is a project in my hometown of Ottawa where um, government offices and arts um, studios and theater um, are connected intrinsically together. And then the Obama Presidential Center where community is re being rebuilt and re-energized with very um, grassroots programming. If using the performing arts, and we truly believe as a working group in this, and we want to find a solution for the civic theater, 
Um, and my questions around renovation really are to, well, maybe we build new, you keep operating and not doing that, but um, the Lincoln Center transformation, which has been going on and on in a really fantastic way uh, with old to new, um, original renovation and present, which from what I understand, maybe David Geffen could even use more help from the road. Um, transforming these spaces into, and, and you presented this today, this idea of transparency and, and inviting. And then life on buildings. This is an opera house in Oslo where uh, even in the wintertime, you can literally climb the building and be a part of the roof. Our beloved shell. The Denver uh, Performing Arts Complex has received many accolades and some criticism, but this idea of building over time arts institutions together in one place and then merging them with civic government. Sustainability, absolutely critical. It was a part of the 2008 proposal for this site. It needs to be one up on that proposal. Uh, Adaptive reuse is part of sustainability and something we really think should be thought about. It's a project in Sao Paulo, Brazil that took a series of um, factories and made it into a community center and city hall. Repurposing with soul, past and present. And thinking about history of place and how we build on that history. This is an incredible project in New York City. It used to be a women's prison. And now it's a global hub uh, for women's and girls' human rights and uh, a community gathering space. Honoring our culture and our history as San Diegans. And then reacting to our climate and climate change. Housing. I wasn't convinced in the beginning that, that this, this merging was going to work, but I'm more and more and more excited about it. I think housing as a human right and addressing the many types of housing that we need. It's housing the homeless, it's ha affordable housing, it's the missing middle, it's co-living, a huge movement in San Francisco, uh, micro units, market rate and luxury housing they all should be able to live together. This is a permanent housing uh, for the at risk in Los Angeles. Um, Los Angeles is really at the forefront of developing this affordable and even um, housing for the homeless to be taken off the street. It's, it's, it's really an incredible series of projects that are really worth uh, investigating. This in San Francisco is a series of uh, prefabricated containers for making for whole, uh, affordable housing. So we want to work with developers that are innovative about how you build. Project in San, San Diego, uh, micro units, fantastic idea. And then co-housing in San Francisco, all these projects under construction now in probably one of the most expensive places to live in the country. And mixed use to keep the, the site alive night and day uh, and transformation adaptive reuse from the banal to the present being more um, aspirational, bringing education to the site making the public ground floor completely open and inviting. And then finally, and, and we could be missing lots of categories here and we really want to know your thoughts so that we can keep our research alive and going, but urban follies and civic art are something that could uh, flow through this site throughout the years and change over time and really express our belief systems, 
um, and the joy that is living in this city. This is one of my favorite projects, which is a market hall in um, Belgium. Um, on the weekends, it's a farmer's market, and during the week, it becomes a performing arts space, um, a gathering space, public. Um, a pavilion in Paris that has completely changed the understanding of the park and the place that it sits. Lincoln Center, um, the Hyper Pavilion, which has a restaurant underneath it. Restaurants bring people to the site. Um, Intrigue, this is an annual um, arts festival in London where every year a different artist or architect is invited to make a piece and it becomes a gathering node for uh, curiosity. And of course, LACMA, um, the Urban Light Project, which is the most Instagrammed place in all of Los Angeles. I think about all the other options there are, the fact that the arts in a civic space and an art space uh, make a difference. The same in Millennial Park, Times Square, you can take a parking garage and make it super interesting. And so many more projects. So we want to build this document that uh, you can't deny the inspiration that's there as a developer. Uh, you want to learn more about these projects to understand how you can make a difference. And then we want a manifesto that um, speaks to potential outsiders or even developers who are based here about what we, the people of San Diego, really believe we are and what we want to express about ourselves in this really critical, important project. So that's where we are now. Uh, we have a couple of people working in our studio pretty much full time to pull this together and to keep building it. We really want our committee to be offering up um, projects. Lori Black has developed some questions that she would like us to ask the public. Um, and so we wanna publish that shortly and, and be reaching out to community groups to, to really engage them because we think this is really, really critical. Um, and over time, we're gonna build more and more examples. And we can go back in time to history or forward to the future. So should we stop sharing? No, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Jennifer, thank you. That's outstanding. And uh, obviously, very thorough, a lot of time and effort to put into it. It's been really cool. So, thank you so much for that. Uh, we will proceed to public comment. Again, to raise your hand to speak, select the raise your hand button or input star nine when I let you know when it's your turn to speak. Unmute yourself by either selecting the unmute button or by inputting star six. Looks like no public comment. Thank you. I'll turn it over to committee members for questions. Lori, go ahead. Um, here, um, hold one second. Who went to Elton John the other night? All right. So I had a moment and I don't do a lot on Facebook, but. Um, it came just after my inspirational two-hour meeting with Jennifer and our committee. And one of the one thing I talked about was my participation on the committee of 100. That was Jordan Mitrovich's committee, along with John Moore, Larry Lapino, and Charles Steinberg, about really going out, not just in a downtown, but going out in all of the areas and letting the citizens of San Diego City and of the county talk about what they wanted in their ballpark. What did that look like to them? People wanted sushi. I thought that was weird, but you know what? 
I've dealt with John Concert. A lot of people are eating sushi. So that's the San Diego way. So on the questions, there's just, I came up with a whole bunch, but I think part of this is going to be communicating with the stakeholders, even when we don't think they're a stakeholder, but they think they're a stakeholder in order to do the kinds of things that we want to do and spend the kind of dollars that it's going to take. What we don't want is somebody to talk about a Taj Mahal downtown, right? Because that's probably what they will do. And that's a lot of what we did it got in the beginning of the ballpark. So I thought of that, the Petco Park as a legacy, this library. I, I sat in a library commission for seven or eight years. This is a legacy project. And I'm convinced, and I said this to Jennifer, that Civic Center Core, whatever we are going to call it, will be the legacy project of the 21st century that'll pull together Petco, that'll pull together the library. And if we do this right, I believe it will be seamless. But the way we really make it happen is to bring citizens into the committee when we're ready. Thank you. Are there any other committee comments or questions? Uh, Julie? I just echoing that that I think I, I thank you so much for all the work put into that beautiful presentation. Um, I really got the wheels turning um, and, and even more excited about what we're tasked to do here. Um, but I, I so thank you loved it. Um, but I do agree that it would be great to see um, the these ideas infused with um, San Diegans from all spectrums um, to see. Um, not just you know the the big shiny projects, but um, you know things that reflect the diverse community of San Diego. There was a lot of you know tall, big metal glass, and yes, we want we want it modern, we want it beautiful. But um, and and maybe this is because the very early stages and the iterations of these ideas, we're not seeing the color, we're not seeing you know um, a, a lot of that art, different types of art infused um, into into the design. So that's the only thing that that. I think was flagged for me. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Martha, did you have your hand up? Well, I just want to add with my. Um, Praise to Jennifer and the team and the committee. I, you know, it's a spectacular presentation and it's just the beginning of thinking about uh, once when I was asked, what is our biggest risk at the San Diego Symphony Orchestra? I said, not thinking big enough. And I think this is a crucial moment for the city. It is a crucial moment for downtown, which needs this more than ever. Um, our downtown needs to be a vibrant destination for our city. Um, I think also, you know, Carol, I, I was actually listening to your whole presentation as I was madly driving here after the meeting, but um, I think understanding that the civic theater, look at the theaters we have and the capacities they have. Um, they are differentiated, so the um, different music center will now be at about 1,800 seats. The Balboa and Sparkle, which is now undergoing a completely different um, renovation not for the performing arts that I know of, um, are slightly smaller. The Civic Theater is enormous for today's standards, by today's standards, but we do need a theater in the city that can present large-scale theatrical works. We have the Old Globe, we have the Playhouse, we have you know, um, the Lyceum, hopefully that will be coming back online, we have smaller venues, but we need a wide range. We, we have amphitheaters. Um, but this is a very unique and important niche for the city in order to really present the kinds of uh, artists and, and theater works that are presented here. Also, it says a lot about our city if, if culture and the arts are at the center of it, along with government. It talks about the city being an important, serious, fun-loving, creative destination. 
and traveling around the world as I've been able to do, and going to concert halls and performing arts centers around the world. Um, they have stimulated people's desire to live downtown, to be downtown, to travel San Diego. This, this is a once in a lifetime chance. And I, I really uh, am delighted with the work that's put into this and what will come. But I, I think just putting that in perspective, that's what I would like as a take away today as well. Thank you. Are there any questions, any other questions? I see no one. Oh, I was just going to say it seemed like such an inspirational way to end with my this comments. <laughs> so it's a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> uh, well, I think the most important thing you know has been said is just thank you, Jennifer. Thank mm -hmm. you to your uh, firm and the resources you're putting into it. Thank you to the community members who are sharing with you. This is so important and I'm feeling inspired for for this, no matter where it was, but particularly in this city where this discussion has been essentially bogged down for 30 years by the notion that um, elected officials, uh, I'm not talking about the current group, but over time, and I think it's a reflection of the electorate, it's not necessarily the elected officials' fault, have been slowed down by the fear of being criticized by the public of, oh, well, this is, this is, you're building too nice of space for elected officials or for city employees. And this notion of public space is just so important of uh, the city hall. It's not a place to house the mayor and council. It's a city hall. It is a, a city center. And now, even when we, with the homeless crisis, you know, when we talk about public space, there's this fear, oh, well, if you do that, it's just going to be a job for the homeless. And, so there's all these, all this cold water being thrown on, on, on this. And so the inspiration and the perspective is so important, especially given the history here. And I think it's really important that we communicate this as you are doing so effectively in this manifesto to the mayor and council and that they communicate it to the prospective bidders. This is not simply uh, housing. Housing is, is very important, and we have you know certain state law requirements that we need to work through, but it's so much more than that. And and that needs to be communicated from the get-go to the developers, and that inspiration needs to be communicated. So I just wanted to say well, thank you so much for this. This is really important. Thank you. Well said. That was even more pressure. That was more pressure. <laughs> So I guess I, I, I when we in our profession we talk about determinism, what buildings can offer, promote, create certain kind of moments or feelings. And our current city hall creates a feeling that this is a Soviet bureaucracy, right? I mean, this feels a lot kind of building. Uh, versus what, what, where we are now, think about what it used to be like going into the old library, it's kind of like a chore, it doesn't take it, it doesn't come out of it. And now we're at a place that encourages it just you feel proud. And, uh, so I think I don't want to lose in all of this. This has to be also in the building trust of the public in government, nobly it, because the folks who work there daily need to be supposed to work. The electors come and go, right? It's not for them. It was really for people who access government or people who work there. And that civicness is something that, that uh, which is why we start with the kind of civicness, because that's that's a quality thing in the building. And so I, I just want to put a pin down in the whole idea. Let's not forget City Hall, that it should be fine, it should be fine, it should be invited, and it should be invited for a lot of different reasons. I think that's not just on government shoulders. I think that's a challenge for all of us to continue you know, talking about it and putting it out there so that they have us aiding in that message. Any other um, questions or comments? Uh, again, my motion is required as this is an information item only. And we'll now move to the working group updates. Uh, well, the item one, which is the downtown round table working group, we turn over to Betsy and Bill. Thank you so much, uh, committee, and thanks, Jamie, for having us today. Uh, I've really enjoyed the last two presentations a lot to think about and have aspiration and, and goals around. So it's pretty exciting. Um, our committee 
I mean, we have been meeting quite a bit and there's, there's a lot going on, but at the end of the day, we really want a, a, a program that is implementable and that can happen. So we want all of the things that you all are talking about, but in order for that to happen and to have these really world-class players come in and give them all of this aspirations and green space and sustainability and everything that we've been talking about that are really, really important. We feel strongly that there needs to be some guardrails on the NOA process so that we can have the biggest players in the world come in and do this kind of project. And the more certainty we can give them in that process, the more quality teams that we're gonna have come to San Diego, local, national, international, whatever. So for us, we really focused on the building blocks, the basic building blocks that developers and property owners and financiers are going, are going to want to know about this project. So we um, talked about three guiding principles. We, we talked about a lot of other things, but right now we have a draft and we are going to definitely engage with people that work downtown and visit downtown and live downtown and own property downtown. We wanna engage quite a bit and we can work with the other committees. We can um, take those questions that Lori Black drafted. We can do lots of things and we want to all of December and January. Uh, but here's where we're focused at the at the moment on three key things. So our number one focus is on prioritizing feasibility of this project by focusing on the six civic center blocks and and maximizing maximizing the revenue and value through the density and putting some sort of guardrails around what it means to have residential on this on this lot is we actually want to see the housing be built. We want to see the projects be built. We want to see the green space be built. So the more certainty we can give to the development teams, the better. That is not how the HCD system is set up right now. So it would be um, something we would need to engage with the city if they are comfortable with that and HCD to come up with some sort of guardrails so that we know what maybe what um, of the, if this committee makes a recommendation that it's going to focus on the six blocks that we've been talking about, maybe this committee also says something like, and up to one third of that will be housing, and up to two thirds of that will be civic use, public use, sustainable use, and we engage with the city and HCD and get them to uh, sign off on that so that the teams have a little bit more certainty when they come in to understand how much of the site should be each of those uses without being too prescriptive, but giving guardrails. So that's our number one priority. Our number two priority, uh, priority is envisioning this as the seat of local government, as the seat of city hall and accessibility for people so that they can visit their elected officials, kind of what we were, t what Jennifer was talking about with the reimagining of the Met and how can this building be where people can go to get planning help and development services help and meet their elected officials. And we don't know that it's clear that that's where the city is going. So we wanted to just get some clarity from our group that this would be where the, the seat of city government, it doesn't mean every single thing has to be here, but the seat of city government where the council chambers are in an urban plaza for public civic discourse and gathering and maximizing connectivity to downtown and the rest of San Diego. And that can be connectivity through mobility options, that can be connectivity through having nonprofits come and celebrate those, whatever it is, cultural events that they might be having and just make this a place where we're proud of and people wanna come on the weekends and at night because there's always something interesting happening. And you might run into your mayor your council member when you're at that event and our third thing that we're really focused on is encouraging vibrancy and activation through high quality urban design including creation of uses that attract and keep people in downtown to work and live and play with the focus on arts and entertainment 
community service, community serving uses, retail and housing. So those are our three principles. Um, we hope that that is something that this committee can talk to us about, give us feedback on, and then our committee, our, our developers roundtable of the Downtown San Diego Partnership will take that input, have our public meetings, and come back with maybe a, even more refined three-point principles for you. Um, uh, Steve Cushman and Joel were on the call on the meeting today, as was Carrie. Carrie did a wonderful presentation for us on the tourism authority and the kind of feedback they've been getting. And I think this mirrors what, what, what the input we had from all of these groups. So if Steve or Joel or anyone else, uh, we were very pleased to have Jay Goldstone and Chris Ackerman Avila there today. If anyone has any comments, I'm happy to have them from the committee and then give uh, Jamie back her meeting. Thank you, Betsy. Um, I think I'll move through the working groups and maybe comments at the end because I have one other one. Okay, um, Jennifer, did you have an additional update? Okay, <laughs> just making sure. Um, so we'll move to item three, which is a terms and working group, and we have uh, Mary Couch here um, setting up the joint open. Great, thank you so much, everybody. It's wonderful to be here and just want to echo many of the themes that have been coming up. Um, from both Betsy and also from uh, uh, Jennifer as well and with Carol too. So what we've done on the, the tourism um, side of this is we've actually brought together different members that are across the spectrum. So we've been talking to hotels, to restaurants, to attractions, to transportation companies that are based downtown or based around downtown. So we've had really good inputs that have come through. And one of the, the key things, and I heard this in some of the earlier conversations, is really making sure that what's developed and what's built is reflective of San Diego and the San Diego brand and the San Diego DNA, which basically means that it is something that celebrates the diversity of our destination. It's something that leans into our Cali Baja culture, our art, our architecture, our vibrancy, and that it really um, takes and reinforces the outdoor nature of San Diego and the beauty that we have here. And we've seen so many great developments that have happened, whether it be Petco Park, for example, or the Rady Shell, that do a great job of all of that. So really making sure that what is built is reflective of San Diego and it is reflective of our place and our people. So that was one thing that came through loud and clear. The other is that it should be aspirational. We should be building something that is truly beautiful and has iconic moments to it. And I think um, just even talking about what was going on with Los Angeles and looking at what's happened there with um, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art there with the light installation, that's something that's simple, but is really something that resonates. It doesn't need to be some big, huge type of thing that's done that really create those moments and those spaces that people can uh, find that are unique to San Diego as opposed to anywhere else in the world. The idea of having this be mixed use so that it's serving workers, it's serving residents, and it's also serving travelers. But the, the inputs that we had out of tourism is we didn't see that this was something that needed to have more hotels or event space you've already got that. So instead do the programming, do the activations, have the restaurants, have the arts, have those things that people can enjoy, uh, whether they're working or visiting or living in the downtown area. We had a lot of conversations about really making sure that this becomes the urban heart of San Diego and that it links to all of the other villages of San Diego and it really creates that opportunity to bring together um, all these different areas that are a little bit disjointed now, but the idea of having something that is bigger and really tied together would be very, very attractive and appealing. So some of the conversations um, in regards to what's being looked at for the civic theater and having mixed use, whether it be education, rehearsal spaces, other things would definitely resonate very nicely with this group. So those were kind of the, the key pieces. Um, the working group that we brought together, there's 12 different organizations that are part of it. 
We're happy to keep meeting help in any way that needs to be done. We have a lot of very specific feedback if anybody's interested in that. But I think at the end of the day, it's reflect San Diego, the quality of San Diego, be vibrant, be iconic, um, and really think about how to build outward versus inward. So make it very, very open. And uh, that would be something that would meet the needs of all. So any questions, happy to, uh, to answer. Thank you, Kara. And we'll move to uh, Steve Cushman for the operations working group and then open up for questions. Steve, can you hear me? Jamie, did you call on me? I did. Do you have an update from your subcommittee today? Um, no, we we have not met, Jamie. We are setting up our next um, meeting um, as of today. So hopefully we'll meet next week and we'll have a more specific fiscal report at our next meeting. Perfect, thank you. Are there any uh, questions? The need for any more chairs. Uh, scene nine. Um, oh, so sorry, Mark. Yeah, it's been on my mind. I don't know which committee to call. The parking structure doesn't seem to get much conversation. Um, and it probably supports the theater and now it supports City Hall. And my fact, my recollection is. instrumental in our meeting because he was able to talk about the softscapes and how that works. Uh, Marty was the landscape architect on the Petco as well and a number of other projects that he would recognize. So I don't know if there's flexibility in the committee, but when we talk about sustainability and green space and parks in this small space, Marty is your guy to build a pocket park in the middle of two buildings. I can't, I, 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 so I, I would love to nominate 
Martin Poirier to be on this committee for you to do it. Again, that's a mayor's decision, but it may be a team thing missing from our group. And I think they'll still participate no matter what. Thought we should know. I, I did sort of broach that subject with him. Um, he is willing to do whatever, whether it be come to give a presentation to our group on the attributes of urban landscape or join the group um, potentially. But for sure, he would come and talk about some of these past projects in San Diego that have been incredibly successful or the ones that haven't gone anywhere and why. And how we can avoid those same mistakes. Thank you. Do you have a So uh, I guess one of the things I, from a programming standpoint, really understand the vision that management has for the future workforce here in the workforce, the city workforce. What is their vision for what we what we know, what are the important things that we do in person? Um, and I just, I, I guess what that, I'd like to hear, you know, your vision for the people who work with the Do you want to be looking at me or the person to your right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking Sorry, at, Mike. Yeah, I'm looking at management, I'm looking at labor, I'm looking at people to your right. And my friends, I have so many friends who work at so there's a, there's a sense that we want people to make the space what is going to work for them. Uh, and, you know, that would be a gym. That would be a really nice dining hall, not just simple green. Understood. Did you have a question? Can you tell me if there's a working group for our local residents that live in the 9111 area area code? You can make one. And we're happy, yeah, we're and we're you're happy to report back if you'd like. I, I think the closest that we have is probably Betsy's downtown round table. Um, right now we have four working groups. Um, I don't know if any uh, committee member would want to start an additional working group. It, it, um, I would just say if, if you have the person's information, Chris, um, we can make sure to have them engage and invited to the roundtables and the community meetings we're going to be holding in December and January. Happy to do that. Thank you. Um, also, I, I think it's awesome what Betsy and, and San Diego uh, partnership is doing in downtown, but maybe there should be another working group for just community engagement in general beyond San Diego. Like, how are we making sure that we are, uh, you know, bringing in folks from all over the spectrum and making sure we're, you know, we're, we're um, people know what's happening throughout the city. Uh, should, should we consider that? Can we discuss that? Is this the time? I think that was the intention of this group so that we could hear from um, stakeholders and residents. Um, I understand, you know, there is also the, the questions that Lori uh, posed that we may be able to push out um, on social media or a survey or something along those lines. But um, that was really the intent of this group. Let's let us finish committee comment and then we'll move to Monica. Is there any other committee comment or questions? Right now. I just I'm thinking really a couple of comments. One of uh, Betsy on the percentage allocation per quadrant, it's hard to even imagine what that is yet until we have this vision. And also, I think the point of how much space is needed for us today and projecting the future of what 
cities and how many vacant offices there are throughout the city at this point. So how we get to that allocation, I think it's really preliminary at this point to think of how we get there, but it is a complex question as to even the fixed amount of space and what the finite fixed the attributes are, what that occupies and then they can talk choices and the others. We do have a quite a wide uh, array to choose from. So that is just the one observation that has significant work. Thank you. Any other committee comment or questions? Hearing none, we'll now take a non agenda public comment. Non agenda public comment is an opportunity for members of the public to comment on items that are not on the agenda but within the subject matter jurisdiction of the committee. Each speaker will have two minutes. The public comment period for non agenda public comment is now open. Please raise your hand if you wish to speak. To raise your hand to speak, select the raise your hand button or press star nine. The queue will close when the last virtual speaker finishes speaking or five minutes after the queue has opened, whichever happens first. When I let you know it is your turn to speak, unmute yourself by either selecting the unmute prompt that will appear on your device or by pressing star nine on your cell phone or landline. Currently have one speaker. Chuck, go ahead. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, I will say I, I do appreciate the ability to uh, uh, listen and see uh, in this hybrid meeting. I would say that um, hearing though the uh, committee members' comments has been very difficult. So I would suggest that uh, perhaps if closed captioning can be instituted when Zoom is on, that may alleviate some of the problem of hearing. Um, the other point I wanna make is, I'm hoping that the committee has a discussion of how this uh, project may contribute to the health and wellness of the citizens of San Diego. Uh, potentially, there, there is no real medical uh, facility uh, accessible in the downtown area. There are some clinics. But the idea of a new civic core that uh, not only addresses political, economic, political, the economy, diversity, culture, also should, in a way, address health and wellness. So thank you for the time. Thank you. Are there any other speakers in the queue? No, there's no further public comment. Thank you. That concludes the end of the public comment. And with that, uh, we will adjourn our committee meeting. So, we'll see you on November 28th at 3.30. And I will work on the